What's up, clubbers? GM, GM, GM. Welcome to Web3 Club. In today's video, what we're going to learn is how do we create an NFT project where the user can basically claim NFTs for free. This is also known as free mint NFT projects. You can use the same technique not just for NFTs but any other kind of tokens like ERC20, ERC1155 and others. And why would you want to give away NFTs for free? Basically to make them popular and then earn on the royalty fees that is generated due to the secondary sales. And sometimes you're just trying to be good to your community who has stayed with you and you want to reward them with some sort of memorabilia. memorabilia. You get it. We'll also go through a simple UI which you can use and let your users claim the NFTs from your own website. But before we get started, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you're new here. If you want to send me a message, please leave it in the YouTube comments or if you have a specific question, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. All right, with that said, let's get started. So now what are the things that we will need to do to accomplish our free mint project? So there are basically four different things. We need to create an NFT smart contract. We can use ERC721A which is a gas optimized smart contract or open Zeppelin's implementation which is also fine. Second, we need to add restrictions to the smart contract so that we don't have unlimited mints. In the restriction itself, we can also you create an allow list using Merkle tree or signature verification both of which I've discussed in a separate YouTube video. So if you don't know how to use them, just search for that video, you will find them. Search for Merkle Tree Web3 Club for Merkle Tree uh, Allow List and search for ERC712 Web3 Club for signature verification. Next thing, we will deploy the smart contract to the Rinkeby testnet and finally we will build the ui just because of how popular it is today we are going to start with erc 721a and uh, you just go to this url which i'll put in the description down below this is a gas optimized smart contract but the gas is optimized for minting multiple nfts together if that is not the use case that you're looking for this is not going to be helpful if you're looking to allow users to claim their nft numbers then erc 721a is not for you i would recommend you go use the open zeppelin smart contract implementations but it's a very simple straightforward smart contract you just need to copy this bit of line i've already done this off camera so i can show you my code now so i have created a new contract called free mint token which is an ERC 721A. To do that, I have imported ERC 721A smart contract. I've added two restrictions. One is the user limit, which means a user cannot mint more than 10 and a max supply, which means uh, totally overall, we will not have more than 10,000 NFTs. There's a constructor function that you can just leave as is. And then there's a mint function. This is the function which the user calls to mint new NFTs. Notice that there is no payable declaration over here because the NFTs are a free mint. Because they are a free mint, we also don't have message.value being used anywhere. The first require statement that is available in the mint function is to check whether the total NFTs that have been minted are less than the maximum supply. So we check the total minted plus quantity should be less than or equal to maximum supply. The next thing that we check is uh, the number of NFTs minted by this user plus the NFTs that they are trying to mint should be less than or equal to user limit. So I can just add user limit over here. Oops. And the third thing that you can add is an allow list verification over here. I've already told you there are two ways through which you know you can uh, check whether the allow list whether the user is in allow list and you can check that requirement over here. After that, you just simply call underscore mint with the user and the quantity that they are trying to mint. We also have this function underscore base URI, which returns the base URI of the NFT. So what happens is the marketplace or the wallet basically checks with this URI and adds a number that the NFT ID, the number, the token number at the end of this URI and checks for the metadata of the NFT. So if I just go and copy this and you open this in ipfs.io slash ipfs slash this hash, you will see that this is a folder of NFTs of metadata actually. And if I open the first one, 
you can see that it has some sort of JSON response. Now this JSON response has this image URL that I can copy and just paste over here and remove the slash one and you can see that this is what the token number one nft will look like so if you want to make any changes you will need to change base uri you will need to change user limit and you will need to change the max supply if you want to have an allow list you will also need to add the allow list verification code if you don't know how to do that just search for my videos there are two videos which i've covered on this specific topic all right so the next thing that we do is we go here and we compile this and once the compilation is done i can just go here and say Select injected provider metamask and a metamask pop-up will come if this is the first time that you're connecting metamask to your remix if you have done that already it will not come it will just directly connect all right once connected uh, what I'm going to do is click on deploy over here so I click on deploy and wait for the transaction to pop up and I click confirm over here all right the transaction has been deployed you can see over here that the transaction has basically deployed and I have an address all right which I will copy in a moment I can also check on etherscan whether the transaction has succeeded and um, it is hopefully it has basically succeeded it will just take some time to reflect on the UI there you go it has succeeded basically so the next thing that we want to do is create a UI which connects to this smart contract and lets us mint NFTs for free so again off camera I have already written the code which is a very simple code you can just copy paste this and understand what is going on but let me just explain what does this look like if I go to localhost port 8080 which is where I am running this code uh, and just increase the font size you can see that there are a bunch of things there is wallet address and which is empty then there's a connect button and there's a mint button all right so now if I go to the code there's a wallet address which has a span uh, and then the span is basically empty which we will fill in later with our address then in the code itself you can see that there's an account variable and there's a contract variable account variable is the variable which stores the connected address and contract is the variable where we will create a new contract object which will help us to integrate with the smart contract so when i click on the connect button what happens is we call this connect method which basically checks for first the metamask is present or not you can of course use a different uh, provider like web3 model which allows you to use wallet connect as well and a bunch of other wallets but yeah in today's video we're going to focus only on metamask so uh, it checks whether metamask is available if it is we basically try to connect to metamask once the connection is made we create a new web3 object and we get the account which is connected with this web3 object once we have that account what we do is we set the value of that account in the wallet address span and then we create or sorry instantiate the contract object with the web3.eth.contract and then we set the abi and address now where do i find this to find the address you can go to the etherscan and check this address and i can just copy this and what i'll do is go down and just paste it over here where i am storing the address and the second thing that i want is abi now where do i find the abi to do that go to remix uh, go here and then select just copy on the abi all right just just if you just click it uh, and then just paste it over here in an in a variable this is the abi so these are the two variables that i'm using to create the contract object and then what i'm going to do is make this mint button work we create an on click handler for that mint button and whenever somebody clicks on that mint button what we do is we check whether the contract exists and if it does we find the value from the quantity input and then we basically use that to mint the nft by calling contract dot methods dot mint with the argument quantity dot send and then send from the account that was connected now you can check that this mint function accepts quantity as an input so that is exactly what we are sending over here coming back to the localhost port 8080 i click on connect and metamask pops up i click on next and click on connect and lo and behold the connection has been made so now what i can do is mint let's say um i don't know one nft and i click on mint and just like that metamask pops up uh, it is asking us to pay the gas fees but you can see that i am not sending any money so now i can just click on confirm and now i wait for the transaction to complete but while that that happens i can just copy my wallet address go back to remix 
and see how many nfts i own and click on balance off over here you can see that i own one because the transaction apparently has succeeded uh, but metamask has not given us the indication so i can just check total supply and that should also be one and yeah i just got an indication that metamask has succeeded and you can see that there's an alert which says mint successful i can just say okay now if i go and try to mint 10 this should give me an error and why is that because i've already minted one and a user is only allowed to mint a total of 10 so 1 plus 10 is 11 and that should be a problem so i click on mint again and this time you will see that metamask is letting me know that you know this will give you an error do you want to still proceed and metamask knows it because it tries to estimate the gas that is required and while estimating the gas it figured out that this is going to give an error so i can just reject and nothing changes but if i try to mint nine more this should work in this case and lo and behold if i try to mint nine it doesn't give me an error so let me just click confirm and now while i'm waiting i'll just check the balance off again and see that it has not changed and now metamask gave me a confirmation and suddenly the balance of has changed from 1 to 10 if i go and check the total supply that has also changed from 1 to 10 and that is it this is how basically you create a free mint nft smart contract where users can mint nfts for free first thing you basically need to create the smart contract with their own restrictions second you need to uh, basically deploy the smart contract Third, you create the UI and then you test it out. I hope this video was helpful. A bunch of people had asked for this specific video in my Discord server, which is why I created this video. If you have watched the video till far, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. If you have any specific question, if you want to send me a message, please leave it in the YouTube comments or if you have a very specific question a question that requires one-to-one -one assistance come join my discord server there are a bunch of people just like you and me who try to help each other out thank you so much for watching the video till the end i hope to see you again next week till then bye bye